How's it going? Setting up the bio filter in the fish farm um, up as a trickle filter just to see if I can get some of the um, little suspended solids out of the system that seem to have accumulated. Um, I think we had a bit of an algal bloom and I'm just having problems clearing up the water so I'm just going to run the bio as a trickle filter just for 24 hours and see how we go. I've already had a chance to run uh, the bio as a trickle filter on this system when I crashed the pH. A lot of the bacteria, actually all the bacteria on the biomedia, um, all became dislodged. A lot of the algae and bio slime on the inside of the fish tanks became dislodged and formed a soupy mix inside the fish tank. So, um, yeah, I swapped it over to a very rudimentary trickle filter and polished the water up really well in about 24 hours. So, I thought I'd bring you along and show you a little plate that I've made up. Um, the system we bought off Paul actually has two proper plates, but they don't fit in this system and I'm not going to cut them down there for the other system. So I made up one out of an old radial flow filter I sort of miffed up. So I've drilled a whole heap of holes in that and it's all ready to go in. Anyway, I'll bring you um, over to the farm and I'll show you how I'm setting up the plumbing to um, yeah run the bios a trickle. trying to feed the jade perch here and you can sort of see them zooming around right down the base of the tank the little black blurry dots and as the food slowly falls you can't see it that's just how how cloudy the water is just from the suspended solids that have accumulated in it over the last probably four or five days i think they accumulated while um yeah the tank wasn't wrapped uh, a fair bit of sunlight got in there. There's now a nutrient going into the tank so the algae are feeding off that in the form of fish food and the waste from the fish. So I'll just give you a look at how we set this up. What we've got here is the biofilter. So that's got the biomedia bubbling along nicely and the two inlets there. And over here we have a sump tank. I'll just take the lid off. A bit loud in there. There's a standpipe there that regulates the height in the biofilter here. So what I've got to do to bring the water level down in here is pull out the standpipe. It's as easy as doing that. And now the water level in here will magically drop. Because we want this just to be a static, a static pack, just a, a pack of media sitting there, we also need to turn off the venturi. So no water is now flowing through there, through the line and through the venturi down the bottom. It's a bit loud, sorry guys. So what's going to happen is the small particles in the water are going to become lodged on this solid pack of media here and the water is going to flow through so they're slowly going to build up in here and that's when we can isolate this from the rest of the system by turning off that uh, tap down there. We can isolate this and then fill it up with water and bubble it up, uh, get those solids moving again and draw them out. Um, so what we have here is the plate that I've made up. Uh, it's just a series of holes drilled in the bottom of the radial flow filter. The idea is the water's going to hit this and then break up and come through the different holes and create a shower effect aerating the water and also dispersing it to keep all the media moist. Um, like I said, this is only just a bit of a, um, a muck around to see how it goes. So these zip ties won't be permanent if this works really well. So all I've got to do is sit this underneath these um, water inlets now, like so, and try and put these zip ties through the right holes. So now the water, I don't know how well it's coming out there, but the water's sort of flowing over a little bit more evenly and we have water dispersed mainly over the centre of the media pack in there. So pretty much we're going to leave it like that for about 24 hours and we'll come back and have a look and see what the water looks like then. Cheers! Well it's been just over 24 hours and the water is a lot clearer. Um, you can actually make out the perch. They're not blurs anymore on the camera. Well, they are when you zoom in. Um, you can see all the way down to the base. Nice and clear. You can make out bits and pieces on the, the um, floor of the tank. So, I'm really happy with the way it's all gone. So now to actually clean this trickle filter out, there's a couple of things we need to do. They're pretty basic. What I need to do is bypass the bio filter, which is now a trickle filter, need to bypass that. There's a tap just there, just there, that will run water past it, straight into the sump tank, so we can isolate it. There's also another little tap just down there that will isolate the bio filter from the sump tank. And these two bits here are the only tricky bits, so I'll just bring you in and show you what I'm doing with them. So before I stop the flow in the bio filter, I'm just going to turn this tap on here and that will allow the water to bypass here straight into the sump. 
back over here on the biofilter. All it's a matter of doing is removing these two brackets. Um, I've already unscrewed them to make it easier. So these are, these are just the screens to stop biomedia from um, flowing back into the radial flow if the water ever backs up in here. So this whole unit can come out now. So the next thing I need to do is block these guys off as easy as whacking a couple of caps on. There we go, no water's going into there. And then just turning this tap off here, that totally isolates it from the system. So we no longer have water flowing into it from here, or water out into the sump tank. And we have a nice flow coming straight through the radial flow filter. Just to show you over here as well, I've cut down the flow into the fish tanks by about half. Otherwise, this radial flow filter would probably overflow. So it would already backed up a little bit until I managed to turn the taps down. It would have been rather embarrassing working down here in a couple of minutes and ended up being covered with water. So the next step is to put some water into here. I'm not going to use water out of the holding tank over there. It's sitting at a pH of just under 8 at the moment. And this system is actually sitting down around about 6.8 at the moment. So I really don't want to um, mess up the pH in here and maybe shock the bacteria. What I'll be doing is grabbing some water from the aquaponics system over there and just pumping it through into here and using that to um, disturb all the solids so we can pump them out down there. And then later on I'll also use that same water to top this back up. Um, so yeah, we've got enough water to run in the system. So, so the next step, now we've got some water in there, is to drop one of these air stones right down the bottom. And what that will do is it will basically move the media and the water around, stir up all the muck, so it's easy to um, remove from the system. Um, this is going on a 3500 litre an hour uh, air pump, and yeah, hopefully it should do the job. I haven't tried it out yet. Um, I will just show you one ad adaptation I've made. I've actually put a bit of a makeshift valve on here, just in case it boils the media too much. I don't want it to boil that vigorously that it actually knocks off um, colonies of beneficial bacteria that are on the wheels already. I just wanted enough to stir up the solids in the water just to get them suspended as I said before. So we'll, we'll start by restricting it and then we'll slowly release the air into it. So if Kira would like to flick the switch, there we go, we've got some movement. So there we go, I'm happy with the placement now. Um, that should be enough to stir up all the solids and get them moving around and I'll give it about uh, 15 minutes and then I'll whack the pump on and um, yeah we'll have a crack at removing some of these solids and I'll show you what they look like. So this is the little pump I'll be using, it's a little 6,500 litre an hour job. Uh, we actually bought it for this system to begin with but it just doesn't have the power needed. Um, it's a little eco-friendly one so I'm using it as a bit of a bilge pump and just a bit of a workhorse pump just to do odd jobs around the place. What I've done is I've put on an adapter up the top here to take, it's a 32 mil or inch and a quarter, um, to take another little adapter that I've got hooked up to a hose. That's just a push-in fitting, it's not glued at all, just push them in there nice and snug. And on the other end I've had to do the same and reduce it down to a um, 1 inch or 25 mil pipe. Now that pipe there will be going into this tap fitting over here, just pushing it in. Make sure it's nice and firm. Make sure the pump's sitting nicely. It's out a bit. Um, and that's going to be what takes the water out from the trickle filter. On the other end of the red tap, I've got a 40 millimeter or inch and a half end cap with holes drilled in it. It then goes into a inch and a half to a one inch or 40 mil to 25 mil adapter and then goes out through a series of pipe work to the other side of that tap. So the idea is with the holes right on the base of the barrel there or the filter, it will should pick up the majority of the solids in the water and yeah, take them out. So it's been about 15 minutes. I just need to turn the valve on in front of the pump and plug her in and we'll see what this water looks like. So just to give you a bit of a better look at how murky this water is, I'll just drop this dark stone down in there. And as you can see, or as you can barely see, he's just down around about there. So I'm more than happy with the way that this filter has worked out, uh, the trickle filter. With the rest of the water now, all I'm going to do is just pump it out using my big black hose here over my unmown lawn and straight into some garden beds down the back there. Just give them a bit of a water with some nutrient rich water. And yeah, I'll come back and put the system back together again. 
So I've got this filling up with water from the aquaponic system now and it's got a nice pH of 7. The pH in this system is 6869. So if I put water in straight from this tank here, it'd come in at 8 and just throw the whole pH out and that'd cause problems with the ammonia levels. Uh, this, the um, bio filter's been turned back to normal. So now the only thing really to do is turn this off and also put this riser back in. So this riser will determine the height in the biofilter. Pop him on there. And as you can see, no water's coming into the sump tank yet. And the media is slowly rising in the biofilter. Just to give you a bit of an idea on how that works. And water's coming up. We're just starting to get a bit of a spill over now. So that biomedia will stay at around about that height now. And there we go, that's flowing nicely. Has a nice level of water in there as well. Now all I really need to do is turn the Venturi back on. And that should start to turn the biomedia in there. And we're back in business. So it's it's not overly complicated. It's there's no like quick easy valves just to turn on and off. I could have built them in, but you know that's the way it goes. So there you go. There's a bit of a look at how we use the bio filter and can turn it into a trickle filter. Um, the little distribution plate. I might make a better one of those, but that's all I had on, uh, on hand. CC Bear uh, told me he had a crack with his, and he used a real estate agent sign. The, I think they call it core flute plastic. He used one of them, and he said it did an okay job. So I might keep my eye out from them for one of them. Um, really happy with what it did with the water. It, it took that muck out really well, um, as you saw before. It's looking pretty clean. It won't be used all the time, it's only an every now and then thing when the water starts to look a little bit cloudy. So it would be a lot easier if I could include taps on the outside of the filter to turn it on and off. But unfortunately it was a bit of an afterthought when I designed the system. So, you know, putting the end caps on and taking the little um, the screens off from inside the biofilter, that's no big deal really. So I'll pretty much will leave it there. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, pop them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Other than that, I hope you all have a great one and take it easy.